Hello everybody, this is Isaac Sanchez here, your financial guide and your financial advisor, and let's not be ordinary, but extraordinary today. On today's video, today I'm going to talk to you about a balance sheet, and the balance sheet is, and how a balance sheet can be used to determine a specific stock, or any stock that you want to go ahead and do research on, or look at, and pretty much it's going to be a quarterly balance sheet, is what you're going to be focusing on, and what you want to look at when you're trying to figure out a specific company's intentions or plans that are going on that they're going to try to achieve or do within a three month span in a whole year. Every three months, which equal up to a whole 12 months a year, each quarter, since there are four quarters, you will be checking four balance sheets in your in that year's width uh, time span and seeing how you can make the most profit out of that stock using that balance sheet. Now. January, February, and March might be a hard time to pretty much see what's going with the market because you only have about last year's quarterly, last year's fourth quarter balance sheet, which does explain what they have plans for the next year, but doesn't really give you updated advice considering that's in, doesn't give you updated information considering that it's a new balance sheet and it just, and it's kind of outdated and it came out about three months ago. By that time, companies usually would either have a different plan or probably have another way to come up with that amount of money. And unfortunately, they don't post balance sheet until the third month so that you can see. So, by the way, if you're trying to figure out where do I find these balance sheets or how can I look at this quarterly this quarterly balance sheet that the company has posted, I unfortunately am too inexperienced to know that yet. But... If I do under if I do find it out and do some more research and I find it, I will let you guys know. But for now, you should probably go watch another YouTuber or try to find somebody who does know. Now, now we're gonna talk about let's say there's a specific bank out there. I'm gonna say because most like right now, I'm pretty sure a lot of people invest in Wells Fargo, Chase. What else? There's a Bank of America and some other ones. But pretty much any of those any of those stocks that, well, any of those banks that have stocks, which they all do, you're gonna look at the balance sheet for them. When you look at the balance sheet, what's it gonna show? It's gonna show you their liabilities, expensive, and assets. Most of their assets will be, most of their top investors, like the millionaires and billionaires that have put money into them. And sometimes it won't even be some of the high and middle class because high and middle class people do tend to save up a lot of money and pretty much save that for generational wealth or put that to the side for, I don't know, maybe something that they will need in the future. So, dang, I got messy here. Besides from that, I just wanna say that pretty much when you're in the market and you're looking at it and you wanna be like, hmm, I wonder what, I wonder how good the stock is doing. You wanna go ahead and check that balance sheet. If you find out how to do it, great for you. If you don't, I'll see what I can do and post another video about that. But for now, I wanna show you guys, Balance sheets. Balance sheets consist of liabilities and assets. The liabilities and assets equal your total equity. And also your expenses on the side. It's like a formula. A formula, which is pretty much an equation that you use to solve something. So your assets will, of course, be the main thing that's making your main source of money, which can either be ca cash flow or passive income. Once again, I will explain. Cash flow is a flow of cash that goes in about, it could go on any hour, any minute, it can be going in while you're sleeping. Passive income is passive money that you have to work for. The money you work for will then come in passively because you've already worked for it. Let's say you go ahead and buy some dividend stocks and you saved up some money for that. Next thing you do is you put that inside of a stock and the money just passively comes in. Even if it's slow, it's a passive source of income, which means that it comes in passively. Cash flow, it could be rapid, it could be slow, it could be as fast as possible, like a snap. But it all depends on what you do with your money and how you invest it. And I do have a lot of videos that talk about investing. And I even have from a little while ago, I think about two or almost one and a half year ago, I made videos on deeper understanding assets, which I talked a whole bunch about assets thanks to some advice from my dad and doing research on my own behalf. So if you want to watch those, you can, and I hope you can find them because you might have to scroll down a bit as there are some old videos. But I just want to appreciate your time for watching this video. But not only that, I just want to say you're an extraordinary person. An extraordinary person must stay extraordinary. Don't be ordinary, be extraordinary. And don't forget to like, subscribe, share our knowledge with others that might be interested. And also, one last thing about balance sheets before I end off today's video. Balance sheets are what you're going to use to, to, uh, to determine the, the future of the stock and also helps you to recognize 
the past history of the stock. Of course, if you don't feel like checking out the balance sheet, you can always just look at the history of the stock. You can always just check out the dividend, uh, dividend payouts of the stock, or in general, you can just go ahead and watch a YouTube video on how the stock originate, how did it start, how did it come up. Besides from that, I just want to say thank you for putting the time into watching this video, and I really appreciate it. And I will be posting more information like this, and showing how you can make money. So let's how you can make money. So. Don't forget, you're extraordinary. Stay extraordinary. Don't be ordinary. Now, as your financial advisor, as I said before in your financial guide, if you take this information and you dwell on it and you decide to put some work into it, you too shall gain generational wealth and be on the way to the promised land, which we all hope to see. Now, one last thing, as I already said, but the best way that you want to not get stuck into a 9 to 5 is by making sure you invest. Investing is a key step to making sure you have some type of backup or safe to work in your nine to five or a job that you have. So to save you from that, try to invest and put some money into that. And not only that, try to put more than what the average person does. Why? Because therefore you can become you can become richer faster richer faster. Although you may be saying, wait, getting richer faster necessarily isn't always a good thing. But here's the thing investing is helping getting richer faster. But the thing is you gotta put the risk because risk equals high reward. No risk equals no reward. So, I know I'm probably yapping too much, but I just want to say and put that out there. Thank you for watching. This is Isaac. I'll see you guys in the next video.